Hi, Grandma's Footsteps here. Uh, Grandma from Grandma's Footsteps here. Now, we're going to work on our double page spread. Um, the next double page spread. I just wanted to point out that um, with this one that you saw in the previous video, I've slightly changed it about um, by um, putting this inside the lid of that and uh, using that little thing there to close it simply because it makes it um, it makes it fit better and it makes it sit in there better um, also I've added a little bit of washi tape down there because it was very boring but there you go that's all done now as before um, all of the pieces that I use should already have been um, uh, distressed well most of the pieces that I've used will be will have been distressed distressed okay so we start off with using the die that's slightly smaller than the um, uh, actual page we've cut it out of this um, lovely card paper sorry um, I don't know I seem to be having a bit of a day talking today but there you go um, that's it so a nice bit of glue on there missing the desk as much as possible and we'll just pop that on um, nice and level and uh, there you go all stuck on beautiful okay that's that done now for this one I've made a little envelope um, out of this really pretty paper and I lined the inside so as I could cover up um, the fact that I've got a magnet there but I've made this little envelope um, I will do a tutorial at some point with the um, envelope maker um, from We Are Memory Keepers which is what I use for this and uh, show you how we do it but what I'm going to do with the envelope is I'm going to use it also as a pocket so um, I'm going to glue just the three sides making sure that it's the uh, bottom that I'm gluing and not the top okay. um, yep and uh, the both sides there so that I can turn the envelope into a pocket as well as an envelope and because of that I'm going to place it fairly low down on the page um, but make it look, um, look reasonable and level grab the uh, bone folder give it a, a bit of a push and there we go okay um, just while I remember let's just turn the sound off on the computer and I'll do it on my phone as well um, just uh, very quickly now we shouldn't get interrupted that's, it. that's lovely so there's the little envelope and I decided um, because I've made that into a pocket I've made these tags again using the same dies um, I've cut the back part out of the cream card and the front part out of the striped paper um, put the little hole in put your um, bit of twine on and they just pop into there like so okay um, lovely and there it is but for inside the envelope what I decided to do was to use the tonic legacy keeper set um, this is the uh, the die the big die for that and you've got a really nice assortment of inside smaller dies that you can use um, I've used fairly plain ones on this um, what I have done is we cut that out and I have cut off here um, I've cut off one set so that it makes it a bit smaller, a bit thinner, and we've decorated them like so. Okay, and then we just pop them in our envelope, which is not sitting down at the moment, but uh, oh, come on, I know you fit, which goes in there into our envelope nicely and it closes down now, a little bit of a lifted just a little bit there um, 
probably shouldn't have put the tags in so early. Um, the glue wasn't quite dry, but that's such is life. Just move the tags away from the outside edge, and then maybe that would be better. Yep, there we go. So that's your envelope with your um, Legacy Keeper die inside and your tags behind. That, that works fine for me. Now, on the next page, I'm going to make open flip flaps. Um, and so I've cut the um, two pieces out of the background card here, like so. And I've folded it at um, there. I creased it and folded it down that edge there. Okay. Um, you can see that there's little circles on there. Now the little circles are there to remind me to um, put a magnet on because I am the best at forgetting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the first side of the magnet on there and now remembering you've got to cover the magnet up with some um, card, paper and uh, so I've put that one there um, and I'm going to glue now this paper on. Now, where I folded that, we don't want a double thickness. So what I've done is I've trimmed the uh, backing paper down that edge as well, so that when it goes on, it just comes to the edge of that fold and um, isn't in involved in the hinge. So we'll just put some glue quickly on that. Um, I seem to have found a way of not gluing the desk, and that's to put the glue on up in the air, which I find a lot of other people do. It's not doesn't feel natural to me but let's give it a go for a while um okay so in this case i didn't use a smaller one i've just covered it um with the color and the magnet is in there so what i need to do now is to attach another magnet on the back just drop it and it will automatically find its partner and go the right way up there and we will put on a piece of double-sided tape. I use the red liner tape simply because it's uh, nice and strong. And we put a piece of red liner tape on there, like so. And we take, smooth it into the, onto the, bat, the battery, onto the magnet, and pull the backing off. So now you've got the battery sitting there, and it's a bit sticky. Okay. So, what I do, I like to do, because you want to use your backing paper to cover up the um, little tabs that you've used to stick it on with, I like to build it actually on the backing paper. So what I would do is I will stick that one, put that one on that side, okay, and then I will put this one on this side here. And I will actually glue them in a moment, but all I want to do is to just line them up, get them where about where I want them, push down on there, and hopefully, a little bit of my nail under there, the magnet, well, I might have to poke it off, the magnet will now be stuck to that, to that side, okay? So that works um, and then oh, I've done it the wrong way around that's the wrong one but never mind I stuck this little thing on it but it doesn't doesn't particularly matter um, goes there so we'll put a bit of red liner tape on there um, there we go uh, like I say I'm no expert at this I I like to think I have some reasonably good ideas and that I execute them reasonably well. Um, but if anything I do um, confuses you in any way or you think why did she do that that way or anything like that, any questions, please just put a comment below and uh, I will get back to you. Um, I do read all your comments and I do try to reply to all of them. Maybe when we get more... Uh, more comments and more subscribers I might not be able to do that but at the moment I definitely do so okay and then we need to put a little bit of glue on there as well um, so that it gives us that little bit of wriggle room 
and also puts the sticky on the piece that doesn't have sticky. So, um, as we found with the last video, it's a good job I do that because sometimes you get it wrong and you have to take them off again. So, here we go. Um, that's your backing paper, so we just stick that on there in the right place. Just make sure we've got it about lined up. Um, which I think is good there yeah, that's good and then we do the other side on as well um, as I said I was supposed to have had this on the top but um, I possibly could swap it round um, except the magnets are in a strange place but I have to make sure that I do stick that on that side so there's your sticky here we go and we fold, uh, no, yes, we fold that like that and we put that on there to be opposite that one. Yep, making it nice and level, nice and neat, that's well attached there. Now, and we stick the um, paper on there. The backing paper now because it's the same size as the uh, actual flip and flop there i can put the glue on there um because i haven't got to worry about going around the edge so we stick that there like so because um, i wanted this to match the envelope so there we are and yep yeah, the magnet works it closes so that's fine um just to make sure, yep, we have got the magnet in the right place and that closes. So now you can see by doing it that way, um, oh no, we have got it on the back, never mind. Um, this is going to be glued into there so you won't see it, that's fine. Okay, so we'll glue that in now, not a problem. Nice bit of glue along the edge there. So if you're doing this sort of thing, if you make it up onto your backing paper um, and then stick your backing paper in, you haven't got to worry about, you know, um, whether you've got to trim your backing paper or um, try to manoeuvre it around so that it covers up your um, hinges and things like that because it just does automatically. Especially as, in this case, your backing paper is slightly smaller, smaller than your page. Um, so... Because it's slightly smaller than the page, you wouldn't necessarily know where to stick your flips and flaps so that you can just stick your backing paper on and um, be in the right place. So, okay, that's that done. And I'm just going to have a little pocket. Um, so, here we go. We'll just put some glue along the bottom of the pocket there. Um, yeah. And away we go. That's my pocket. Ho ho ho. And there. We'll just pick, pop that in there. And also, this will fit because this was cut from the same die as the backing paper. So, this will not interfere with the closure of the flips and flaps at all. And this is just peeking out from underneath here. And you've got the stripes. So, they do, you've got the correlation between the two pages there. Now these are the um, the tags that I've cut out um, to go inside there into that little pocket, and I'm just going to just do a little bit of um, your distress ink on these here to uh, make them sort of look a bit distressed and to fit in with everything else. As I said, I really like it because when you use the same distress, distress ink all the way through an album, it does actually help to tie it together. Um, and it gives it that sort of vintage look. Um, and people like, people like the vintage look. Um, and it's almost like, um, you know, faded, old faded paper. In fact, the uh, distress ink I I use it's called vintage photo so um, <coughs> yeah sepia 
and I, lo I love things, all things sepia. So that's done that now. And just put that back. Just put the lid on your inks. Um, and using the inks, to be honest, is a hell of a lot easier than um, when we used to have to use tea to dye, dye things. I mean, yeah, okay, tea dyed paper, good, but um, that's a lot easier. Okay, you can put it exactly where you want it. So I'm now going to put a hole in. I'm using my cropper dial, and I put the hole in there. And this one, make sure it's the right way up. And we put a hole in there. And then I get my bit of twine. Um, these bits of twine are actually <coughs> threads that I've pulled out of um, a, sack, a piece of sacking. So um, it's quite cheap, really. Now, when you're doing putting these uh, threads and things through, it doesn't matter whether you go from front to back or back to front, um, but try to do it the same all the way through. So I always poke it through from the back to the front um, so that they're all done the same. That's that's the most important thing. It doesn't matter which way you prefer to do it, as long as you do them all the same. Okay, and then you just pull the tails through the loop and pull it up. Now what I do is I get to this stage and I pull it up and when I get to the back here okay um, turn it over and pull it up fairly tight and then I put a little dob of glue right there where that piece comes over the top of the other piece and that just helps to stop it um, pulling out and coming undone loosening whatever so um, I, it's very easy this is a good way of doing it just putting um, putting it through the hole and then putting the, the tail through the loop but um, it's not actually very secure not unless you're using elastic um, it's with ordinary uh, twine or ribbon or tape or something it's not very secure um, so you want to uh, put that little bit of glue behind it and it just helps. I do, I do it with ribbon um, and everything behind and uh, you can't, you don't really notice it. Mm -hmm. So that's, hi, sorry about that. Um, camera battery again, but there you go. Anyway, we've just finished off this tag now and we'll pop that in there and uh, we can close this up and there you go that's our two page spread finished for today um, with our we've got our um, legacy keeper book, book in there and um, yeah and our flip and flop with our tags yeah. okay um, just before I go um, I know a lot of people will be curious and probably will be asking is um, what papers I've used here so let, I'm just going to give you a little show okay I've got Hobbycraft Vintage Botanicals um, now this is absolutely gorgeous um, just couldn't resist this look at this absolutely lovely and you've got the gorgeous uh, butterflies and um, flowers and birds and things there um, it is absolutely gorgeous and the colours um, I like a lot there we go so that's one of the pads that I've used and what I've done is I've partnered it up with this one which I got from the works as you can see very reasonable called Vintage Charm um, now these are very thick papers and they're double sided um, very 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 nice and they go quite well um, with the vintage botanicals so there's that one and just to uh, for the lighter colours like the envelope that I made there we've got one of my favourite uh, makers of uh, paper pads here Paper Boutique I've got a lot of their pads because I think they're absolutely awesome and uh, 
there we are. If you look through there, there is some really, really nice um, papers in that one. And then for um, a little bit of a change, we've got here a 6x6 pad, also from the Paper Boutique, and this one's called Nature's Gift. And I've got a few bits of this hopefully going in there. Um, there's the stripes. So, yeah, th this is uh, this is really, and you might recognise that one, really nice. And just in case I need a little something, I've got Paper Boutique, the Dawn Chorus here. Um, the 6x6 pads are quite nice if you just want a, a small um, item cut out. So that's the paper pads that I've used there. And I might be using a couple of things from this. I haven't decided yet. This is called the Wild Flowers Topper Pad. Okay, and uh, it's what it says it is. It's a topper pad, um, and they're already die cut in various different shapes and colours. But I thought some of these might just uh, um, work. Like, for instance, that's where I got this lovely little circle from. Um, and it blends in really quite well once I put the um, Distress Ink on there. So, that's it for today. Um, I've enjoyed sharing my ideas with you. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Um, it's great that um, so many of you are subscribing. Um, I'd like to see more of you there. And if you, when you subscribe, if you press that little bell, um, you'll be informed when I upload another video, so you won't miss any. That's great. So, for today, bye-bye. Take it easy out there. Bye. That was...